Browns also uh, reportedly made another move on the coaching staff. Uh, Jacques Cesaire, defensive line coach, um, was Houston's defensive line coach. Um, Browns uh, also could potentially be keeping um, the man that he is, that who is currently the defensive line coach, Bed and Bloom, uh, Mary Kay Cabot tweeting out, um, he may remain with the team as a run game coordinator. So, again, to your point, this is another instance of that they're trying to kind of find different voices to, to do the things that they're looking to do in that coaching staff. Yeah, and trying to take everything to the next level. Right, like if Ben Blue, like the defensive line was good this year. I mean, Miles Garrett might be defensive player of the year. Um, you know, Zedaria Smith didn't didn't have a ton of sacks, but came on late and had some sacks. You know, they were sixth in the league, I think, in total sacks. Um, you know, Devin Tomlinson, I thought, played well. Jordan Elliott had his best year. Alex Wright had his best year. Like there were positives there. Now, was it good enough? The Browns obviously said no, and you can you can point out reasons for that, right? Maybe Smith should have had more sacks. Um, maybe as a group you want to be the, you know, have the most sex in the league. Miles Garrett, at the end of the year, we know he didn't have sex. Again, it's not all about sex. Um, but they decided to make a change there to try to get even more out of this group. What's interesting to me is, you know, Cesar doesn't have a background with J- Jim Schwartz. And I thought maybe Schwartz would bring in somebody he was more had more experience with, right? And he didn't really do that with, if you look through the staff, right? He kept Jason Tarver. Um, he hired Ephraim Banda, but I don't know if they had a background. Like, it, this is not Jim Schwartz just bringing a bunch of guys he used to work with. And you see the same thing with this hire. Um, played in the league. I think guys like that um, from their coaches had success with Will Anderson Jr. and Jonathan Gennard. Um, But again, the Texans didn't keep him, right? I mean, we're talking about the Texans, what a great year they had, what a turnaround. They didn't renew his contract. So, you know, I, I think it's just about fits and the people, and we'll see if this guy fits well. Well, you mentioned Grenard. So um, take a look at this. This is Grenard under Cesar and uh, not. So 25 games before Cesar's tenure in Houston. Um, so that would be 20 and 21. 33 pressures, 9 sacks, 24 stops. 23 games under Cesar. 22 and 23, 59 pressures, 14 sacks, and 46 uh, stops. So, again, does that mean success? No, but it shows that he helped develop a guy who's considered an elite pass rusher. Yeah, and, you know, I think the Texans were – I know they were top 10. I'm losing the numbers off the top of my head, but against the run. They were top 10, so it's not just the end. They had good guys in the middle. Sheldon Rankins is one of their tackles. I think they were second in the league in yards per rush. Um you know, they let – it was under 100 yards per game they allowed, uh, you know, against the run. We mentioned their sack pressure. So, yeah, I mean, those are things you look at and go, okay, this guy has to have something to him, right? And they're a playoff team. Now, maybe it's as simple as D'Amico Ryan's kept him for a year. He was under contract. Now he's not. D'Amico's a new coach. Maybe he wants to bring in his own guys. And the Browns, you know, saw this as an opportunity to upgrade. Um but, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of things to like just looking at this 2023 Texans team. 